everybody. I am live today on Dr. Jill Live, another episode with Warren Phillips. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. He's also known as Non-Toxic Dad. Today, you're in for a real treat because we're going to dive into really practical ways that you can live your life, build your home, protect your family from the toxins that we all encounter. I think often when we talk about this topic, it's just doom and gloom, and it can be completely overwhelming. But we're going to actually share practical tips from our lives. What do we do? What do we actually take into practice and play from the expert, the dad that is the non-toxic dad? I was featured on his podcast, and it's such an honor. And now here you are here. So welcome, Warren. Thanks so much for joining us. Dr. Jill, I absolutely love talking to you. We're so much on the same page and we really understand the impact of toxins, I mean, on the world's health in general, but, and how it affects the outcomes in our lives, our history, our future, our legacy. As a dad, man, you know, the next generation coming up, we got to get a hold of this stuff so that we can really have that impact that we need. If we're, we're bound up with all these toxins, we're done. And so uh, pioneers like you, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years as well, man, and we've been, we've suffered with all the symptomology, but we're both on fire to educate the world to live a non-toxic lifestyle. So this, I couldn't be more happy than speaking to the right crowd um, and share any of the tips, tricks, and things that I do that can make their lives better to help them make decisions and choices that are going to take them incrementally better in their lives. So I'm so excited. Thank you. You are so welcome. I love your energy. And it's the same for me because it's so exciting to know that there are solutions. Let me just do a brief intro so people know who you are. Uh, Warren, also known as Non-Toxic Dad, is a scientist and a dad who's dedicated his life to promoting a toxin-free lifestyle. And like I said today, we're going to get really practical to give you some tips and tricks that you probably put into place right away. Um, he's completed his master's in geology. Then he worked as a scientist for several years, but then his focus shifted as he started struggling with unusual health issues and noticing the harmful effects of toxins on his health. Me too, Warren. <laughs> it sparked his passion in researching and promoting a toxin-free lifestyle. And what I love is your mission is just to help others keep healthy and toxin-free living. And what's really, really precious is as a dad, you know, as a family, often people out there are like, what do we do for our children? And one of the things I'll just start with, and then we can jump right in is 2001, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the same year, there was a, a study in Canada. We think we talked about this cord blood of infants, meaning coming right out of the womb, over 200 chemicals found in the cord blood. I think it was in Canada, but no different from the U S and that that's 20 plus years ago. So what was happening is we realized that babies being born into this world that should be like beautiful, sterile, healthy immune systems were coming in this world disadvantaged. And so that's 21, 22, 23 year olds right now. And what, how much more toxic toxic load are our babies nowadays coming into the world. So let's start with preconception. You're out there, you want to be a mom or a dad, and we can talk about practical tips. If you have children, what do you do if you want to be a parent and you, and you're wanting to decrease toxic load, where do we start? Yeah. I mean, you, you, I'd like to say, you know, really prepare a couple of years ahead of time. You want to detox your home first, remove the sources of toxicity, reduce your personal toxic exposure, and then start doing things supplement wise, definitely diet wise to start extracting the toxins out of your cells and your, and your bodies. So that doesn't go into baby. So every, as we prepared for each child and each time we got better, right? We wanted to have kids. We did the right things the best we could at the time with the timing and then we also took a break from detoxification, especially the mom's detoxification, at least for six months, still eating healthy and doing all that, but not pushing pathways and doing some of the, the, the medical, I wouldn't call metal, but natural methods of detoxification, taking zeolites, um, <clears throat> DMSA, you know, the harder de heavy metal detox, uh, boosting your glutathione or your, you know, methylation pathways, all the things supporting the liver and kidneys and just really start flushing toxins through your lymphatic, through your gut, your colon, um, because those things circulate and circulation is going to lead to that getting into the blood, into the system, and then getting into baby. So there's this process of stirring up the pot uh, and it's getting better as technologies are getting better. So that's what we did. We really looked at reducing our toxic exposure, looking at the areas, especially in the home where that baby is going to come into, that's also decreasing the toxic load coming into mom. Um, and I always say, start in your bedroom. Cause you, so if you have a, I had, a, I started with a really small home. So before we um, conceived, I was living in a 750 square foot, two bedroom apartment. So that was great because I could get that. I still had to start in a bedroom because we didn't have much money then. Yeah. So I had to use a fan instead of, uh, you know, an air exchanger or uh, a special filter on my 
yeah, my HVAC unit, my heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So I did a fan and a dehumidifier to keep the humidity down so we didn't grow mold in my bedroom, but I had fresh air blasting in because it was a newer uh, condo that was putting off a lot of volatile organic compounds. If you'd measure it in there, it was three, four, five thousand um, parts. I think it's parts per billion they, the, the meters measure with. And so I had to get that down, had to do something for not only me, so I could sleep at night at the time, because it would really race me and I didn't sleep well, but we just controlled our bedroom, removed all magazines out of there. We didn't have money for a nice bed frame, especially the organic wool, natural, all the wonderful things. So we just took a, a organic mattress, threw it on the floor, or we got a, just the metal, just the metal frame, threw it on that eventually. But we just really thought about the long-term consequences to our own health, to the mama and to the baby. So we just did the best we could and just removed all sources of toxicity. Uh, solid wood furniture that we got hand-me-down, wiped it all down, but it was, this one was actually uh, made from non-toxic paint already. So that was great, but it was blue and and yellow with little blue and yellow knobs. I mean, this was kid stuff, but I was so concerned about not only our health as parents, but that future generation, because those studies were out in 2001. We knew that the cord blood was full of these toxins, triggering genes, altering the microbiome, uh, passing on all this toxicity to a little baby and their buckets are so small. And that's yeah. why kids are getting sick today in their 20s. And honestly, on Non-Toxic Dad, my followers, um, the, the, the group and the team that's around me uh, cheering this all on and wanting this information, 25 to 45, they're yeah. sick, yes. um, mostly women. Yeah. So love framing that. And just to, to reiterate, basically, if you're a mom, you're wanting either you have children or you're wanting to have more children or you're brand new and you haven't had children yet. Um, it is really important. If you are going to detox, start 18 months prior to conception and six months or so prior to you wanting to conceive or trying to conceive, you should not be doing any int intense detox practices because that comes out in the breast milk. It comes out in the, uh, through the placenta. So we're actually saying don't detox if you're right before conception, or if you have conceived and you have, you know, a baby uh, ready to be born, please don't detox because you're going to actually do more harm than good. But think about this beforehand. Now, if you have children, let's move on to that because you're obviously a dad. Um, how many children do you have, Warren? I have, I have three little girls. Awesome. Oh my gosh. And girls and the endocrine disrupting effects of chemicals. Let's talk about girls specifically. You know a little bit about my history, but I grew up on a farm and 25 years old got breast cancer. So clearly there was an endocrine disrupting effect on my own health as a child. And when you get cancer at 25, the insult to the DNA probably happened 10 or 20 years. So maybe when I was five or 10 years old or yeah, even yeah. zero. So for little girls, what things might have endocrine disrupting effects and what can we do to protect our little girls, especially boys too, but especially girls with the breast tissue, the endometrium and the, those hormone related tissues, I think are even more affected. Yeah. So even preconception, if you can't get pregnant, detoxification can really help because, and especially removing toxin because they're endocrine, dis endocrine disruptors, mm -hmm. right? So that's huge. Like, why would you put endocrine disrupting chemicals in your body when you want to get pregnant, right? And there's a lot of them. We're talking about your fragrances, get rid of your perfumes, yes. um, shampoos that have fragrances, anything with the fragrance, okay, yeah. plug-ins, the car air fresheners, get rid of all massive endocrine disruptors, neurotoxic, inflammatory, hormone disrupting, get rid of that stuff. Try that stuff first, right? And I know a lot of moms have, and they're still having troubles. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, pointing the finger or you did something wrong. This is just life, guys. And I get it. Um, I have lots of friends that, that have trouble even getting pregnant. But if you are blessed. These are like parabens. If you have methylparaben, ethylparaben, paraben, a bath or body product, anything and anything you put on your skin goes into your body. So you want to be, you want to start with when I get the breast cancer after the next several years of cleaning up, you start with what do you put on your body? What do you put in your body? And for women and men, we use a ton of hair care and makeup and products. And all those things should be really looked at to see if there's toxicity involved. Yep. The phthalates, all of it. So EWG, I know that you have tons of resources, um, your book, you know, all that stuff. So you do need to take that journey. And I love to, when you have an issue, right? If your kid's misbehaving, there's always a cause. Is it, what am I doing? Self-responsibility as a parent, right? 
if I'm not getting pregnant, what can I take that's my responsibility? Not take on the things I'm not responsible for that have been put on me, but what can I do? I always look at it as responsibility and it's work and it's hard. And a lot of the times our emotional energy isn't there to make those decisions. So I know that it's tough. That's why you get on podcasts like this. Get encouraged because we've been there. Eight years it took me to get functioning enough to ask my wife out and, and I wind up getting married three months later. That should make you laugh. Um, but it, so, but it took me a long time and it was hard work and it was painful and it took a lot of great people in my life to encourage me to get there. So I want you to be encouraged. First of all, I always do that with you, Dr. Jill, because I know that this can be very overwhelming and I know the people that follow you um, trust you and know that we're not putting fear here. We're just getting to what the literature says. This is not conspiracy. This is not BS. It's a fact that this stuff affects your life and is wrecking your hormones and is making you sick, fat, you name it. We can throw all the nasty buzzwords that marketing uses out there, but this is not marketing. This is fact. It's truth. And you can take control of your life. So kids, what do you want to avoid? absolutely get rid of the toxic makeups. I have a video that's 9.4 million views. Why? Because it is it is such a big deal. These little kids are putting all these chemicals and in, in makeups and perfumes to smell pretty, to be like mom, shiny hair like mom. And at the end of the day, that's setting themselves up for failure, right? It's setting themselves up for a lifetime of medication. It's setting them up for the inability to get pregnant because it's a fact that they're endocrine disrupting. It's a fact that they lead to cancer, right? And you, and just a little bit, it passed the test, Jill. It's like, it's just, you know, it's fine in the safety studies. Okay, add that with next one, the phthalate, the paraben, the pharmaceutical chemicals that are in your water, you add that all up, you don't have a chance. You are not going to win this fight unless you give your body a chance, give your kids a chance by removing these toxins. So you need to definitely with your kids who have little buckets and maybe a, you didn't know about this stuff before, right? Before you had your first and you see the consequences. My kids are just struggling with their health, their immune system because they're immunosuppressive toxins, right? Especially heavy metals. If you're a mom with amalgam fillings, the amount of mercury in mom's mouth is directly proportional to the amount of mercury that's gonna show up in all the endocrine organs, tissues, brain, you name it. So that stuff goes in. So amalgam removal is another great, huge thing. Now, if you have a baby or you're, you're, you're pregnant, run away from touching your amalgam fillings. You will put so much mercury into your bloodstream and body, it would definitely hurt your child, in my, in my opinion. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not Dr. Jill. Um, but the research shows that that's a whole bunch of mercury that's coming out. And based on my experience, I mean, I we taught doctors for 15 years and we've taught them detoxification, thousands of doctors. So we've seen the horror stories of moms making that mistake, but it's a great move. And I would give it a year of after your amalgam's out, I would give it a year before I would start getting pregnant because that's a big one. So that that was free, but that's a huge source that goes into baby. So when you have a child, you really need to make sure they're eating clean, not eating the, the chemicals that are literally banned in Europe, like Skittles. And uh, I have some junk food over here because I'm going to shoot a video on it. This stuff is all going to be banned in California because of the ingredients in it, right? It's probably be banned in New York. You know, we don't like New York and California, depending on what side of the line you're on. But the fact is they're getting this stuff removed and Europe has banned this stuff, right? And there's good reason for it because it's poisonous to your children. There's chemicals in there that aren't safe. We think as moms and dads, there's they, they care about our kids. There's We don't even think for a minute half the time, and now the world's waking up to this. We don't think that, oh, they wouldn't give us something that would be hard on our kid or cause behavioral disorders or you know might make them sick or might make them not be happy or give them low energy or fatigue in school or they're not able to pay attention. These chemicals in these foods will 100% affect your child's outcomes in life and their behavior. So you're investing truly into their your legacy for your family and their legacy as they grow. And their genetics will change based on the foods that you're putting into their bodies, how it affects their microbiome, which is the fingerprint of whether they're going to be healthy or not. So be very careful. So we talked about the makeups that we're putting on our kids. Get rid of that stuff, guys. Be so careful with that. The the Don't let them put on perfumes, right? 
Jill, some other ones that that you find. Yeah, so let's talk about so the phthalates are the and fragrance. With fragrance is a universal term that can include some really toxic things. So if someone yes. says put fragrance on a label, you don't want to assume it's okay. It's probably not okay. Um, so assume that any fragrance or perfume, yes. you're done. You know, yes. unless it says essential oils, you know, yes. which are it's and too so much. Less. It can also all, be endocrine disruptive. Yeah. Hey everybody, I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected. Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science, and Faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Also be endocrine yeah. Well, I'll just tell you really practically. So I do my own testing in the urine for toxic chemicals every year. And I had been for years after breast cancer using only essential oils for perfumes, but I still have a collection of like designer perfumes, like from the day. And I've never gotten rid of all of them. And so the other, you know, like, it's maybe, hard. <laughs> yeah, but months ago I was like, Oh, can it really be that bad? I'm going to try just a little bit. And I still try to put on my clothing, not my skin and not very often but I retested my phthalates the following year. It was off the charts. And I was like, wow, I just showed in my own end of one self that this really, really, and this was like maybe once a month, twice a month wearing the perfumes. It wasn't that often, but it jumped up so high. I realized, okay, I can't even cheat a little bit. Like, why not just get rid of them? They're gone now. I just use essential oils and I love them. That's phthalates and the fragrance. Um, the other thing you mentioned is parabens, which is methyl ethyl parabens. And if you want a, a guide, if this is all like foreign to you, as you mentioned, Warren, environment Environmental Working Group, ewg.org has free, it's a nonprofit that does toxic research and helps us know what products we can do for clean. And they have a skin deep database where you can actually search your shampoo, your products. I will tell you, if you go to Walgreens or Walmart or Target or any of those names, I'm not putting anyone on the spot and you just get commercial products for hair or body or bath, you're probably buying something toxic. You literally have to search out the health food stores and the specific kinds of places that literally say, so the labels, you want to start reading labels and looking for these words. Um, something else is non-toxic stick, non-stick cookware, right? Let's talk oh about gosh, yeah. FAOs. We just, in our state of Colorado, which you're not far away in Utah, um, tested all the water supplies, all the general drinking and public water supplies. Every one of them last summer showed toxic levels of PFAOs. And these are forever chemicals. We can't even calculate the half-life. So our generation and generations past are going to forever have this in the water supply. And it's toxic. It's carcinogenic. So you can filter it with carbon filtration or with a reverse osmosis. So you need to drink filtered water is the bottom line. But let's talk about in the house, what are some practical ways like water and air and um, and EMFs? What What do you do with your family? Yeah, and I, I want to touch on a few other things to, to create healthy children, right? Definitely, I, I like to go RO because it's 99% carbon, um, doesn't take out heavy metals. People say that it does, it doesn't. A little bit of chlorine, no fluoride, and you're, it'll take out some volatile organic uh, compounds and petroleum-based uh, chemicals, carbon-based. It'll pull some of that stuff. So petroleum-based stuff, organic toxins. So it works, but you know, there's a mineral thing, but put some minerals back in. I, someone asked me the other day, it's like, well, why would you, you know, the, you're going to rob all these minerals from your body. Well, if you're eating healthy, you have plenty of minerals to go around. There's so much more minerals in your food, but I still, even though I eat super healthy local from regenerative farms where the regenerative farms are actually the, the plants are able to uptake the minerals because of the microbiota in the soil. So it's not a mineral deficiency in our soil. It's a living soil deficiency is why we don't get our minerals. So there's dead organic food that you're eating if they're not on a regenerative farm and they're using organic fertilizers. It's, they need to get it from the bugs. Anyway, side note, RO system, so important. Don't let your kids eat things that are gonna be sprayed with glyphosate. So if you're out to dinner, ask the question, hey, is this uh, non-GMO or organic corn? I would say organic. And if it's not, don't eat it. Like those are big ones when you go out ask about the canola oil, right? I know that people defend that. It's not defensible. That stuff is toxic and sick. 
right? Look at how it's made and then tell me that's safe, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not, right? So get the bad fats because your kids' cells, their cell membrane, right? The very foundation of their cells are made of these fats. Mm -hmm. And if you're not putting good fats in, they're not able to have a healthy cell where they can get food in, fluid through the cellular member, the two, the lipid bilayer. And if you can't get good things in and can't get good thing, uh, bad stuff out because you've inflamed that cell with bad fats, you're done. And canola oil and other nasty seed oils, the bad seed oils, canola oil being the one, but soybean oil, thing like that. Um, sunflower oil, better because it doesn't degrade. It's not perfect, but I would still eat something with sunflower oil. That's just me. But I avoid those other ones because you're- And then kids, the trans oh, and the saturated. Like, yeah, saturated trans and saturated. Fat, trans, yeah. Not saturated, but trans exactly, fats, right? Trans. Mm -hmm. We like saturated fats for our hormones. Cholesterol, yep. good for your child's hormones, yep. right? So we have a- uh, this young, multiply, uh, rapidly developing child, like my daughter went, like grew a foot in the last year, right? So she needs the building blocks for a healthy cell. We, um, I think it's a 7 billion cells a day or billions of cells a day that we recreate. And if you recreate a healthy cell over, it says seven to 10 years, you're going to have a healthy life because you're doing the right things to reproduce healthy cells, the opposite would be cancer, having DNA damage and disruption and chemicals causing problems. So you're replicating bad cells, unhealthy cells, trying to build cells out of things that the fats you can't even make good healthy cells out of. It's like, good. it's the old saying, good things in, good things in, bad things in, bad things out. Healthy foods in, good fats, no glyphosate, destroy your gut microbiome so your genes aren't triggered, so you don't have inflammation, so you don't have a leaky gut, so your kids don't have eczema and all these issues from leaky gut and autoimmune conditions going on. So you're eliminating those sources. But if you have a, if you start from the end by the, you know, say your kid's seven years old, by the time you're 14, it could be a whole different child, right? So if you start and even in your own life and brain cells, they said that didn't reproduce and heal, they do if you do the right things. So make sure your kids are eating right, get rid of the GMOs, get rid of the glyphosate, right? Which you had a ton of Dr. Jill. Yeah. That's part of your history and your story, right? The bad fats, get in the healthy fats, raise healthy kids that have the building blocks to grow and be amazing in this world. And we need amazing kids. Yeah. And I love what you said there um, is it's never too late to start. So if you're listening to this and you have a seven-year-old or a 14-year-old and you're like, oh, well, I haven't really done the best job. You can start now and make a huge difference. It's never too late. Even for me, it was until 25. I thought I ate clean. I did pretty well. But my after my breast cancer at 25, I said, I'm going to take this so seriously. I went through all my bath and body cleaning products, everything I used in my house. And I also want to say, you know, when you get, when you first start looking at this, it is overwhelming and kind of expensive. So I just want to, it took me maybe 18 to 24 months to really go through everything. So it this will. is not an overnight thing. It's just a bit by bit by bit. And every little change that you can make is worth it. And it, it's okay to take your time, but start by looking at what are you putting in and on your body? Yeah. Think about it. Dr. Jill, you kept your perfume. I remember keeping my cologne because I yeah. think I bought that like yeah, when yeah, I exactly. first found out about this stuff, you know, and I tried it and it made me brain foggy and right. not feeling well. I'm like, you know, I'm getting rid of it now, but you bought this stuff, you invest and I'll just use it up. No, I had this one client and I did see clients, you know, knee to knee. This was this woman who had a really sick daughter, right? And I gave her what to do. And she was on food stamps and had a, was funding from this. She was from the, you know, downtown rough area, but this mom was monster to see her daughter get well. Like I was so inspired by this lady. She didn't wait, right? She ripped everything out of her closet, got rid of everything and just started over, started simple, used a bar of soap for yeah. everything, a clean yeah. bar of soap. We didn't need any of this fancy stuff. Not only did her daughter's fissure and they wanted to take out and put a bag on her, not mm -hmm. only did her fissure heal, her son's heart condition fixed and she lost like 50 pounds, yeah. right? So when you do the right thing, you get results. You can do it slowly. Yeah. Or if you're that type, like I am the all-American athlete and might've just held on to my jupe jupe baby or my Draquar Noir or whatever, because I'm, I'm dating myself, I'm 48 years oh. old. I didn't want to leave that stuff. I left yeah. it because it's hard to let go of the past. It's hard sometimes to believe that this stuff's really toxic, but we've done the research. There's yeah. nothing, there's no BS here. So right. if you can get anything from this conversation, be aware and know that it's going to take time for you to do it and make it fun, make it exciting. It's like, I'm going to make this change. This is fun. People will think you're nuts, yeah. but the world 
between when we got sick, I got sick when I was 25 as well. Oh, Weird. Yeah. Same um, yeah. yeah. How old are you? I was 25. And I think we're about the same age too. Yeah. So <laughs> we got yeah. sick at the, yeah. at the same time, but there was no information out there. Right. The right. science backs us up now, right? It, we're not crazy. You're not crazy. Listen to yourself. Listen to your gut. You know, this stuff is bad for you. You and know, it's bothering you. Take notice you too. feel it, yeah. right? Yeah. So these are the things we're encouraging you with. Great advice, Dr. Jill. Oh, thank you. So we don't have much more than a minute or two, but I want to just briefly touch on EMFs. What do you do? What do you think? Briefly touch on that. And then I want to have a takeaway to leave everybody with. So let's start with EMFs quickly, 90 seconds or less. What uh, EMF you- is an umbrella, right? And this is one of the misnomers of it. It's um, electric fields, magnetic fields, and radio frequency. They all have impact on our cells by vibrating them in different directions and which affect our endocrine system, specifically like melatonin and sleep was where a lot of the research is at. And then also um, highly probable or something like that. I don't know the exact uh, language of causing cancer, right? But we know these are sleep disruptors. We know they cause cellular inflammation. We also know that electric fields are um, donors of negative electrons, right? Which fill up this capacitor in our body and our body needs to be connected to the earth grounded, right? And that's why grounding is so important. Tons of research out there. Why? Because we're discharging the negative electrons we're getting in the electric fields in our homes. So what I've done is you can buy a cheap meter that'll say uh, electric field and magnetic field meter. I have like- I've got a really one. expensive meter here. <laughs> yeah, you can get the, the really expensive ones that'll do them all too, right? But, yeah, um, but totally agree with you. I just want to show, I literally right here have it in my room, but that's a radio frequency meter you can get for your own home. So if you have it in your bedroom, right, what I would do is look for the magnetic fields, electric fields. And if they're high, say 50 50 volts per meter high for electric fields, um, you want them down um, below 1.3 at best. That's what the building biologist says. Um, I think for magnetic fields, it's 0.5 milligals. I mean, you're throwing me into this is I'm not a building biologist. Throw it down there. And if it's high bottom line, go to your switches in your room, have your kid yell at you, start switching off your switches Mm -hmm. um, and on your, on your box. And you're going to get the best night's sleep of your life. Because when you lower to zero, if you can, in your room, you can buy a little battery to charge stuff. DC current doesn't bother you. Battery current doesn't bother you. It's the alternating current that goes back and forth that creates those fields. That's a huge thing you can do. And you can just go right down to your uh, switch box, shut those things down at night, until you can afford to buy a switch where you can hit a button. Um, and that's what I do before bed. So, and I also, you can go underneath your desk, put the meter, unplug stuff, move stuff around. I had 106, 76 volts per meter on my desk. I knew it was frying me. I always felt fatigued and crappy at my desk, but like you, I'm busy. I'm like, ah, this is the only time I do this. I got it down to like 18 just by moving stuff around underneath my desk. So, and I had, I had a guy help me with that just the other day and it, the science of it's crazy. It can, one wire is going this way. And then you have another wire going this, it can actually, you know, waves cancel each other, right? Cancel the electric uh, field, the waves, the, it's like a sound wave that like headphones, uh, noise canceling headphones. So I think it's a big deal and it's becoming a bigger deal. It's not cool to talk about it because it's not as, 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 People don't want to believe it like they understand the toxicity issue. That is now in the forefront. But I believe electric fields, for me, have made a massive difference in my sleep and my well-being. And I think it's something we need to address. Love it. That was brilliant. And just like you said, you can get a meter. Building biologists are the kind of people that if you're looking for someone who's an expert, they're usually trained in this. I've had someone come into my house. So if you warn, so you can actually have an expert, but you can do some of this yourself. Okay. I got to let you go because I know you have a deadline with your daughter, but let's just last 30 seconds. What would be your takeaway encouragement to the listeners um, from the non-toxic dad? Well, I mean, I, if you can look at all my videos and all the different toxins, right. That are, that are, that I talk about, I, I cancel things, right? I, I cancel the toxin to create awareness. I do it in a funny way. I do it in a light way. I do it in an entertaining way because I just want to educate the world so they can make informed choices, right? The, the fact of the matter is if you don't know well, you won't do well, right? So get educated, but never get into fear. Realize your body is tough. Dr. Joe and I talk about this. You can recover from a lot, but you're not so tough that this stuff isn't affecting you. But you're going to survive. You're going to be fine. But get educated. Know 
get educated about the sources of toxicity in your home. Start in your bedroom, getting that clean and your personal care products, your bathroom, get that area clean, get fresh air coming in, start there so you can get the energy, get the free, the free brain space, get rid of some of the anxiety from the toxins that are in your life that are stopping your decision-making, that are decreasing your testosterone so you're not full of energy and vigor um, for life and your life can absolutely transform. But get educated and slowly, toxin by toxin, there's my daughter, she's coming in, come on in, um, toxin by toxin, you can get a better life and heal those cells. You're gonna have cellular turnover, billions of cells a day, and know that you're getting better each day with every decision that you make invest into your health it's the best investment here's fine with this when i didn't have any money when i was living in a small important apartment i everything that i owned was donated or garage sale right i invested into the things that mattered first and i knew if i had my health because i lost my health i told my wife we are never going to skimp on food and living a non-toxic lifestyle and we didn't have all the fancy stuff. I didn't have the fancy meters and building biologists coming to my house. I didn't afford any of that, but I got my life back. It took me eight years, but I got there because I knew that it was the foundation of what was going to be the weak link to everything else in my life. Friendships, finances, vacations, family, all of it was linked to one thing, my health. And if I didn't get that back, and I guarantee you, if you looked at the, every area of your life and you looked at the weaknesses in your life and you looked at the outcomes that you want in your life and the, the legacy for your life, your health is going to be the weak link. Yeah. And that weak link can be strengthened by easy decisions, by getting educated and making good decisions for you and your family. Brilliant. Warren, thank you so much. Um, where can people find you? And then we'll let you be on your way. Just on social. Uh, nice. to go to <laughs> um, any any social uh tiktok okay. uh instagram that's my uh, the, the most active but i will I, link up to all of your places and go enjoy time with your family thank you for your time today warren Have blessings a good all thank you Bye. thank you dr jill you're amazing you're